mean, everyone doesn't have, you know, all the coaches, all the, these cages, all these facilities that you have. So we can imagine we're at a park right now. Um, we're going to start off with wiffle ball. You're with a little 12-year-old team, 13, 4, whatever it is. And we're going to eliminate the underhand. We're going to get them ready for a game. We say slow down the game, right? So then we got to practice a little bit fast, faster than the game or the fa as fast as the game. So Keegan's going to go up here. Jeff's just going to throw the ball like a pitcher would throw it. Keegan's going to hit. It's simple. Very nice. So now he just takes two. Bam. So the perfect thing about that, he just saw a reaction of a game like. Okay. So we're like, ah, we're at a park. Well, usually you hit into a net. You hit into the screen. You soft toss, put a T. All you did is take that screen. You can grab that at Dick's or wherever, Sporty Good. It doesn't have to be this. This is really, really fancy, amazing. If <laughs> You can get one of these, get one of these, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a little screen you throw out in the park or the backyard. You turn that around so they can't hit you, and you do this, you know? So this is real simple. So that's an easy way. So now we're going to get into the baseballs at practice if you have a place where you can, you can do it. Um, this very simple drill. Um, Jeff, you, got the, you got your little high tech? All right, so we got a gadget on and everything. Uh, you're at, you're at, where you're throwing from is about 17, so you're throwing about 100. <laughs> and Keegan here is a high school kid, and the fun part about it is, it's Jeff's son. So Keegan, you know, when you're doing, yeah, when you're doing dad and son stuff, that's always fun. So on those videos, you saw this drill, you saw... A player that's in AAA knocking on the door, and you saw a high school kid doing the same exact drill, same speed, not slowing down. For Keegan, we do what we do with our professional player speed, and he's a high school player. We don't expect him to do every single swing correctly. So those are those drills, get him loose. So now we're going to do a two-play drill. All right? So we're going to put this right here. He's going to go from this plate to this plate. He's going to be about up here. You grab that cone. We don't need that cone anymore. Again, home plates are just home plates. We're actually talking about our players. We're having problems a little bit with our professional young players. They want to go to the same spot all the time, no matter what. And it's home plate. It's here. It's here. We put balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We want them swinging at three through five as much as they can at our level. The problem is, what if the pitcher's throwing five, six, seven, what we call the thing, make your pitch? Or we have a machine, and the machine's just throwing the ball right there every single time, and they're not swinging because it's outside. We're like, step in. Like what we used to do as kids. Well, these kids are a little different. So it's really great when you actually don't have a home plate, and they'll figure it out. Another thing, self-organize. Allow them to self-organize. You don't have to have home plates and all this other stuff. You can put two cones or nothing. Just tell him take four steps up, three steps up, or whatever it is. And that's what he's going to do right now. And the difference of speed, he has to figure out. So he'll take three and then go up two. And then go back one. So this is just a sequence. And he's going to do pitches, not swings. All right, good. Now he's going to go up for two swings. Really good. Now he's going to go back for one. Now, anybody have an idea why we do pitches and sequence like that? Anyone? That's what happens in a game, right? Why don't we practice that way? You know, a lot of you guys probably already do practice that way. But what Jeff's doing really good right now and what I like is he's throwing balls. So if you're a BP pitcher, we have a couple on our side that do, never throw a ball because they just, they're so good they don't throw balls. I hate those guys as a hitting coach. I absolutely hate them. Um, because I need my players to make decisions. Swing, not. I need a ball here. I need a pitch here. I need, I need them to actually self-organize and do this, what he's doing right now. That's why that is so important. So we're going to put it up now. We're going to move Jeff back a little bit. So now he's going to drop back to about 20 feet away. And he can go on his knees. He can sit down. And he's going to throw a little harder. 
Keegan's going to have a little bit more time now. Exactly. Thank you for that one. Hey, stay the same speed. Don't all of a sudden, he's back further. I got to throw the ball any harder. Stay the same speed. That will allow him to all of a sudden have a pitch a different, little different than speed. Go ahead and up to the first plate, Keegan, the regular home plate, not the cone, but the plate. Distance wise, perfect. Good. Outstanding. Good. So now I'm going to put a twist on him, okay? And this is where we go to coaching. A young player, I want him to hit the take. He's doing an outstanding job controlling the zone. But now we want to just change the drill. He has to figure out a way to barrel every pitch Jeff throws. It's one of the drills we love to do. You have to swing at every pitch he throws and barrel it. There you go. There you go. Outstanding. OK, so that's going to happen. That happens all the time right there. Our, our youngest kids, and that's why I love um, it's great coaching, working with the MVP of the national. That's, that's awesome. But I, when I'm sitting there with, with Bellinger and Cole Tucker, those are the guys who came through our academy when they were in high school all the way to pro ball. And now I'm still, you know, we hang out for eight years. We've been together. It's real easy coaching those guys. You don't have to say anything very much to those guys. But this happens to our guys who come into AZL. Because one day they were amateur players. The next day, nothing changed. They're still the same kid. Now they're a professional player. They still do this. Okay? He didn't swing because he's got all these other things on his mind, even though we just freed up his mind. Just swing. Every pitch, just swing and barrel it. That's all you got to do is barrel it. It's almost the hardest thing for the kids to do, to free their mind, because they have so much mechanical stuff in their mind. All these young hitters, it, it is amazing. They're like, why didn't you swing? Well, I was thinking about the first thing they always say is thinking about something. Why didn't you swing? Didn't think it was a good pitch. But that's not the drill. We freed up their mind. He's so worried about what pitch to swing at, he forgot. My only, my only thing is just swing. This is fun time. So we'll try it again. Then we just try it again. I love it. Five pitches he's going to get. There you go. Outstanding. Really good. Outstanding, Keeg. There you go. You just barreled the same pitch he took. That's amazing. Good. Really, really good. Great job. And there you go. And that's what happens. Because the first few times they do this drill, they freak out. You know, oh, my, they had so much on my mind. We just freed their mind up. So now we're going to go through the same drill. Jeff's going to go. We're going to show you different ways we can do this. We're going to move it at an angle now, all right? So he'll do this drill at an angle. Really simple. These are all, we didn't, we didn't, you know, come up with some fancy stuff. We've all done this, you know? This is nothing new. Most of us did it when we were kids, and all of a sudden we got away from a lot of this stuff. He's going to do angles moving back and forth. So you're going to three right there, and then he's going to move up three in a second. Good. Outstanding. Now move up three. Outstanding. Move back to the three, and you'll be done. Outstanding. Good. The hardest thing for kids are going to go have angle over here. It's just, it's really hard. And Keegan obviously has done some of these things before, um, so it really helps. But he made adjustments. He organized. He self-organized. He had to do timing. He had to put his mind frame in the right frame. All right, now he's back to his pitch round. Um, we, we, I haven't said anything about mechanics yet. I haven't done anything with Keegan's mechanics. 
and he's doing these drills with no problem. Most of you guys don't have the time to do drills. I have done, we have done swing days. We've done body days. We've done all that stuff. But we're in a season now. We can't do all that. You know, just like our players. We don't, we get to have them every day. It's really, really hard to do mechanical changes on a player. And I know all of you coaches, I'm as guilty. We all look at the video. We slow it down. Oh, see, his hands aren't there. Your hands aren't here. Most of the time, it's just timing and doing these drills. Um, Jeff, give me some ideas why I set that up. You, you, got, you just saw that you'd like to talk to yeah, on your talked, amateur side. We talked about uh, a lot of the pitching tech with Ross Seaton. Uh, when, when you utilize hitting metrics, and technology like force plates, K vest. Have you guys heard of K vests? Okay. Um, Micah mentioned the video. It's now to the point where our hitting analysts don't even want to look at the video. Okay. Video is like the x ray, if you will, if you want to use a medical term. Whereas the K vest and some of the other measurements. That's the MRI, okay? So they can look at these graphs and these charts and they can tell what that hitter's doing, whether it's foot strike, first movement, contact. Those are the, the three things that we, we really pay attention to. Foot strike, first movement, midline movement, and, and then the contact. Okay. so. Real simple. What we just did is mechanics. It really is. It's mechanics without talking mechanics. We had them self-organized. We had them do all these little angle. I mean, we ran through it, but this was for him to figure out his mechanics. Now we're going to go in the game. We're going to throw the ball 90 miles an hour. The thing's set up on reaction time at 90 miles an hour, and they're tennis balls. And now he has to figure out his timing. We'll have time, we'll do, I can add a couple other drills in a second. We're just going to see simple thing of going to a store, getting a box of tennis balls. I have a question real quick. Yes. So when you were talking about the, the plate setup, what is in relationship to where the batter is setting up to the plate, you're discussing using the cone instead. Yeah. Is that for the sake of the drill, or are you discouraging the consistent, like he says, on back corner of the plate, you know, this is my spot. You know, this is, this is where he is in the box each time. That's part of his, his routine. Is, are you suggesting that you I, So what level, what level on the coaching? Okay, on middle schools. So I've gone to a lot of middle school games. I've gone to a lot of little league and high school. The back of the box is different at every place, whoever, whoever does it. You don't have the same exact spot on each guy who does it. So right. if he always goes there and you have a tighter one, now he's standing tighter than he would. I guess what I'm referring to is in relationship to the plate itself. Okay, well that's that's different. So it's not back corner, yeah. So the plate would be there. He he he's standing back corner. That's great. So what we know is, if that's what he needs to do to hit, that's great. But we want to get him where mentally, he's he can do anything. He's not he doesn't have to have that to hit. So don't don't discourage it, but don't encourage it. <laughs> yeah. It's what he does. But a lot of us coaching would say, hey. Get to the same spot, that's your routine, and that, we've actually put that in their mind versus let them be free. If the guy's throwing really slow, I actually, maybe he doesn't need to be back there. Maybe he should be up here. You know what I mean? And that's the freedom that you give your player by, by that. You know, a cone, that's a cheap way to do it. We could have came out here and put plates. We have a cone, you know, that, that's the only reason we have a cone. So you can really go and make any of these drills better every time we do them. And that's what we do. We add, we've got diff 50 different variations of, of one drill that we move. So now it's just a tennis ball and it's really simple. We already timed it up, so it's around 88 to 91 every pitch. And he's not afraid of velocity now. And if you notice, he swung and missed and fouled one, right? No big deal. He's used to that. So in the game, when he fouls the ball off and swings and misses, he doesn't freak out because he's, that's normal. That's what happens in a game. 
and he figures out and makes an adjustment. And he's getting tired. All right, so now we're going to just do another game with him. We're going to move him up so he gets fastball change-ups, right? So he's going to go back here for the change-up. He's going to start. We're going to move him up probably to about 100 miles an hour now. You're going to go sequence two, three, one. What I just called out is a sequence where he's going to stand. So he's going to go two really hard fastballs. Now he's got to figure out how to hit a change-up. Now he knows it's a changeup. So it's not like a game where he doesn't know. But when he gets a changeup in the game, he's not going to freak out because he's faced it. Now go to one. Now talk about variability training. What batter are you using right now? The uh, 33, 36 ounce. Is it a handle or end loaded? End loaded. Hand -loaded. Hand -loaded. Okay. So. We got ax bats here. We're going to put them in. You want to go to 37? So this is going to be 37, 37. With connection, it's overloaded. It's going to be really hard. He's going to do this drill with this. It's going to be really, really hard for him. Go two, three. Now go three. As you can see, it's still a change-up to him now. It's a tough drill, and he knows it's tough. He's not worried about, oh, man, so take a rest of what we talk. He's done this before, so it's going to be really important as you guys as coaches, when you do all these challenging drills, to be positive, really, really positive. They will see it when they go into the game, and it's much easier. I had a question earlier, I think 12-year-olds, they're like doing tees and stuff like that. Well. I don't know how long you have in practice, but if you're wasting 20 minutes, 15 minutes on a tee, that's not going to help them in the game, probably. That's great if you're doing mechanical work and you're doing a swing class with the player. You know, um, there's swing coaches, there's game coaching. This is more game coaching, all these little drills. Um, if you play in a league that throws curveballs and you got fastballs, I'll show you how that drill works. We'll set up a curveball real fast. You want to do that? You'll, throw the, you'll be the fastball. I'll be the curveball. How about that? So we're going to set this machine up to a curveball really fast. And then Jeff's going to throw some, some fastballs. And we'll show you how that works. So all we're doing is giving a kid a better chance mentally to hit in the game. We're not working mechanics or anything like that at these moments. There we go. We're good. All right. So we're going to go a sequence right here. Jeff's going to throw three fastballs. I'm going to go two curveballs. Then Jeff's going to go back to a fastball. <laughs> Very nice. Now he goes to two curveballs. And you see the difference of how hard that is for a kid. Good adjustment. And then he goes back to a fastball. Now he's going to switch it around. I'm going to go three curveballs to two fastballs, back to one curveball. There you go. Nice. Now he goes to two fastballs. He's got to make an adjustment, figure it out. Very nice. Now, that's not easy. It's really hard, and I think we can all see how hard that is. You can make it a drill to what Jeff just said. Pretty much your best players on the team and figure out how they can do the drill. You know, these, right now what he's doing is that's a pro drill. That's what we do at our level. Um, and we do it every day. It's really, really hard to do that drill. We can have another drill that we'll do. Keegan's going to hate this one, right? Two-strike drill? <laughs> See, he is already. Oh, 
but it's a great drill to do. We're going to do you or me. I'm going to tell Jeff, and that's how we're going to do it. You ready? Yep. Can, you get, can you get over enough or no? All right. You. Hold on. All right, I'm on you. Whenever you're ready. Outstanding. Jeff. Jeff. Me. And there you go. And, and that's just how that drill looks. He had to figure out what he did was, again, we'll get a little more technical, we'll get into mechanics. He got to a nice launch. From this launch position, he got to be first move. He got right there to his middle, was able to hold it, didn't come this way, was able to hold it, get to the middle, create space, and still hit the ball. You know, that, it's not an easy thing to do. A lot of kids, that would be a mechanical thing. A lot of kids, when they go, they're going to go, and their arms are going to go too. It's not going to be a sequence of one, two, three, four, where the body works together. It's going to be, you know, arms leading, hands leading. He didn't do that. So these are ways to do mechanics without doing, confusing a kid and doing mechanics. I know I'm in the Zach's time, so let me let it shut it down. But it, yeah, I was just going to go there. What do you got? So I think it was Okay, first thing is, let me figure out, are we talking about football or baseball? Baseball. Okay, so in baseball, you only have how much time to work on mechanics? We do back practice once a week, so Monday, two hours. So I'm working with a hitter this offseason that played in the major leagues last year a little bit. We've been working since November on mechanics. Almost every day. That's how hard mechanics are. So how much time you got again each week? Kids pay a lot of money and pay hours of, of their time to go to mechanics and they're frustrated. So a good way to be your player's last coach is to focus too much on mechanics. Let them be an athlete. You just say you coach football. Play football, play soccer, play other sports, play basketball and play baseball. We take out of their natural ability so much as coaches, especially when it comes to hitting. That's, that's my take. It might be wrong, but that, that's my take there. So if you're going to focus too much on mechanics, it's going to be really hard for that kid because he's not getting the amount of time. How many players do you have? Uh, ten. Okay, 10 players, and you have an hour, hour and a half practice. How much time are you giving that individual player mechanical work? Because usually kids take, take lessons for 45 minutes to an hour. Basically a couple minutes per kid. Exactly. So you got to pick your time wisely.